For those of you that don't follow me on Twitter, you might not have seen this past week that my camera took a dive and the 30 millimeter lens I use for all talking head portion and it's been my primary lens for the last three years actually broke into two different pieces. Now the good news is it looks like it's going to be something that is repairable, but it will take a few weeks to get it back from the manufacturer. And in the meantime, I picked up a 56 and a 16 millimeter lens. This is the 16 millimeter lens. It's better than the 56 because the 56, you can only see like this much of my face. But if you're wondering why I am incredibly close and you have such a wide view of everything going on around me, that is the reason why. This past year with my dive into the wonderful world of Voron 3D printers, I've done more ABS printing than ever before. For the current switchwire build that we're working on, it calls for roughly one kilogram worth of parts, but I wasn't very happy with the first set of parts I printed, so most of them have been printed again. For the primary parts and the parts that fit, I've been using the Voron 0.1, the original Voron 0.1, and for all of the other larger parts, I've been using the Prusa MK3S Plus with the Wham Bam Hotbox enclosure on top. Originally, I was batching out parts on the Voron 0.1 till I ran into some warping issues, and it seemed like it was fairly random at first, where some of the parts were warping while others were turning out perfect, and they had the exact same footprint and I wouldn't describe the ones that were warping as having any more sort of complex geometries or any sort of a smaller or larger footprint. They were very comparable parts. After doing a bit of investigating, I was able to figure out a solution to this issue and it actually ended up being something very, very simple. In today's video, we'll take a look at what was the cause of this issue as well as what the solution was in hopes that in the future, if you're printing out ABS or any other material that is giving you some issues, you can take a look into this and hopefully it will save you some frustration as well as some failed prints. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. As mentioned, most of the parts for the switch wire were printed on my original Voron 0.1. That is also the exact same machine that printed all of the parts for my second Voron 0.1 that were carbon ABS and regular ABS. So this machine is no stranger to printing with that material. I started off using a very similar profile to what I had used on the previous ABS parts. And when I started seeing the warping ran through the usual list of things like making sure that the bed was level, making sure that the powder coated PEI was clean, lowering the speeds, giving the printer enough time to heat up the bed as well as the chamber, and also just checking to make sure that there was nothing else that had been changed in that profile. Although this definitely did help, I was still having some warping issues with some of the different parts. And at that point, I began sort of musical chairing the parts around the bed to see if there was a different orientation that would work better. And the thing that I saw that I thought was very weird was some of the bigger parts were printing successfully which to me would have been more warp prone parts and some of the smaller parts that I was having those initial warping issues with were still warping. So I felt at this point there was probably something that I was just missing. Over the past few months, we've solved some really odd 3D printing relating issues by looking at the output or the preview section of our slicer. So that's where I decided to head next. Scrubbing through the layers, sort of layer by layer, starting with the first layer, I noticed that the seam or the start and stop point for the outer perimeters were often on the outside and in the corner of these printed parts. This is a fairly common place for them to be, and up until this point, I've primarily treated them as a visual element and something that I am trying to hide that sort of takes away from the overall look of my part, which is again, why you'll often find them hiding in a corner. On Prusa Slicer, I checked on the setting and it was set to nearest, and in some of the parts that meant that nearest was on the corner, while other parts it was either in the middle or some other different location. And it got me thinking that typically warping is going to be starting in one specific corner. And so I thought, I wonder if these seam or these start and stop locations being in the corners could be possibly contributing to some of this warping that I'm seeing. At this point, without changing any settings, I went ahead and reprinted a few parts and I kept a lookout on the first layer and the first few layers and the corners specifically to see if I started to notice any pattern. And it did seem to me that the corners that had those start and stop points or those seams were definitely more likely to warp than the ones that did not. When I printed out the V0 parts, most of them had a brim on them. So that really would have helped to sort of counter that warping that I was now seeing printing out these switch wire parts. Also, a lot of the Voron parts have a bit of a chamfer on the first few layers, which gives a slight overhang. And I was fairly certain at this point that a combination of that slight chamfer on the first few layers combined with the start and stop point or seam being in the corner was sort of the root cause of the issues I was having. 
The simple solution to this was just changing that seam location. I swapped it over from nearest to rear, which basically just means that it's going to print that seam or have that start and stop point in roughly the rear center of your part. Now this does mean that the seam is going to be much more visible than when it is hidden in the corner, but in this circumstance, I was much less concerned with visually being able to see that seam on my part and much more concerned with the parts not being usable because they were warping. Reslicing the parts with the rest of the settings being the same and just changing the seam from being nearest to rear made a massive difference. Most of the parts that I was previously having issues with and they were warping in a certain corner were able to print without any problems at all. From that point onward and for the rest of all of these switch wire parts, I went ahead and left the seam in the rear and I had much more consistent results. I've never had issues in the past printing with PLA or PETG having that seam in the corner, at least to the best of my knowledge, but for these ABS parts, it really, really did make a massive difference. If you're having issues printing with ABS or really any part or material that you're having a lot of warping issues with and you've checked all of sort of these standard things, I would highly recommend taking a look at your seam location and seeing if it is in the corner, if you can change it to the rear and what sort of results that gives you. This is something that you should be able to do with most slicers. I know that Super Slicer will be nearly the same and in Cura, you'll want to change the seam to user defined and then you'll want to change it to either back middle, left middle, right middle, or front middle, depending on your preference for that specific part and where you would like to sort of have the seam visible and where you would like to have it hidden. If you do end up giving this a go, let me know what your thoughts are or what your results are in the comments down below. I definitely don't plan on having all parts moving forward in ABS per se printing with the rear, but definitely if I'm having issues with a certain material or certain parts, I'm going to be playing around with the Z seam if I've checked off all of the other items and I'm still having issues. As slicers continue to evolve and become more and more feature rich, I'm really enjoying looking at some of these different features and settings that we have the ability to customize like the draft shield that we took a look at last week. Even if these things don't become part of your sort of regular or daily slicing settings, it's always a good idea to know what sort of tools you have at your disposal. So that way when you do run into an issue, you know some of the things that you can try versus sort of scrambling to find a solution in that moment. If there is a specific slicer feature or functionality, regardless of whether it is in Prusa Slicer, Super Slicer, or Cura, let me know in the comments down below and perhaps I will cover that in an upcoming video. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.